On behalf of the Interpreter Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to this, our first freestanding and independently initiated conference. We don't expect it to be our last. I'd also like to thank the conference organizing committee, uh, David Bailey, Jeff Bradshaw, John Lewis, Gregory Smith, and Michael Stark. I regret that Drs. Lewis and Smith cannot be with us here today. Fortunately, though, if the technology doesn't let us down, Dr. Lewis will be able to participate from New Zealand. I'm grateful to all those who have accepted our invitation to participate and for the time they put into preparing their presentations. As with the other activities of the Interpretive Foundation and as with the Foundation itself, I continue to be impressed and even moved by the well-nigh miraculous way that this effort has come to fruition. I'd especially like to thank my friend and colleague William Hamblin for his early work in helping to establish the Foundation. We're still operating pretty much on a shoestring budget with no institutional support on the basis almost entirely of volunteer labor and expertise. I'm amazed by what has been accomplished so far, and there are more and even bigger things still on the horizon. We greatly appreciate any donations that can be given to help cover our conference costs and to further the work of the Interpreter Foundation. This facility isn't free. Donations can be given at the registration desk by cash, check, or credit and debit cards. We thank you for any amount you can give to help us continue sponsoring events such as this, in addition to the many other activities of the Foundation, including the journal and future book publications currently in process. The book In God's Image and Likeness 2, Enoch, Noah, and the Tower of Babel by Jeff Bradshaw and David Larson is nearing publication. The proceedings of last year's symposium on the Temple on Mount Zion are slowly moving toward completion, and we hope to publish the papers from today's gathering as well. And there's more to come, some of it already underway but not yet announced. Automatic monthly donations can now be set up from our donations page on our website using PayPal. You can simply enter how much you want to donate each month, and the system will take care of the rest. We express sincere thanks for the contributions from LDSAgents.com and Fair Mormon for their continued supportive interpreter. We're grateful as well to Tom Pittman and Bryce Haymond for their efforts to make this conference visible, both here and by streaming video elsewhere. And to all those who've helped or will help with registration, collecting and sorting questions, and so forth. I can't name them all because help continues to roll in, and I don't want to omit anybody. So please express your gratitude toward them. It's, to them. It's the only pay that they're going to get. Um, please follow us online. You can like our page on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Google+, subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for email updates, subscribe to our audio podcast in iTunes, and more, all from the top right-hand corner of our website, mormoninterpreter.com. This will allow you to receive all the latest news and updates from interpreters, such as announcement of future conferences like this one. At least two such conferences are under discussion. We even have an Android app that you can download to your phone or tablet, thanks to Fair Mormon. And we hope to soon have an iPhone, iPad app. We offer an annual print subscription to our journal, Interpreter, a Journal of Mormon Scripture, as well. It costs $50 annually, which covers our cost of printing and shipping only, without markup or royalty. We do not raise any funds from journal sales. Subscribers will receive priority shipment of the print edition of each journal volume before it's available to the general public for purchase on Amazon.com. And frankly, it just plain spares you the hassle of having to remember to order a copy each time we complete a volume, which is roughly every two months. You can sign up for the annual print subscription at mormoninterpreter.com. We're pleased to announce that we have now finished seven volumes of the journal Interpreter to date, publishing at least one new paper or review every Friday for the past 67 weeks since the journal's announcement on August 3rd, 2012, and it was only founded about nine days before that. Volume 7 was completed just yesterday with an introduction that contains a transcript of very prophetic 1991 remarks from Elder Neil A. Maxwell, previously unpublished. It will be available soon in print and digital formats. These seven volumes represent over 1,700 pages of scholarship. For those interested in purchasing print editions of past volumes of Interpreter, they're all available on Amazon.com for a minimal price, about $5 per copy, without markup or royalty. We also have ebook editions of each of our volumes available, many for free, in PDF, EPUB, and Mobi formats, and in popular ebook stores such as Amazon's Kindle Store, Barnes & Noble's Nook Store, Apple's iBook Store, and Google Play or Google Books. Of course, a digital version of our publication is also available for free to read on our website, mormoninterpreter.com. Um, notice I keep repeating that, mormoninterpreter.com. Um, I've learned that from certain commercials. 
On behalf of everybody connected with Interpreter, I need to thank Bryce Heyman for his absolutely indispensable help with his multiple publication platforms. From the start, Interpreter was conceived as a very 21st century enterprise, and much of this is due to Bryce. We have, by the way, five complete sets of Interpreter, a Journal of Mormon Thought, or Studies, excuse me, um, Mormon Scripture, where did I come up with that? Mormon Thought is Dialogue, don't confuse us. Um, <laughs> Those are complete through volume six, that is, here at the conference. We'd very much like to sell them at cost as complete sets, which being interpreted means I really don't want to have to carry them home. Um, some may not know that we have other resources available in addition to the journal. These include 50 filmed scripture roundtables covering most of the 2013 Gospel Doctrine curriculum. Under the able leadership of Andrew Smith, this effort will soon resume with a focus on the 2014 curriculum. Recently, too, we did a special 90-minute roundtable discussion on the topic of early polygamy with experts on the historical data, Brian Hales, Greg Smith, Craig Foster, moderated by Andrew Smith. We likewise have a blog covering current events, thoughts, news, and discussions, including many posts by Brant Gardner on the Book of Mormon and others. We also feature a section of teacher resources with many useful items provided by another of our board members, Taylor Halverson, who holding a doctorate in uh, instructional systems technology as well as a doctorate in Judaism and Christianity and antiquity, is uniquely qualified to help Interpreter on its mission of making scholarship on the scriptures and related matters accessible to interested non-specialists as well as to professional academics. These can all be found on our website at mormoninterpreter.com. I should perhaps also offer an update regarding the Interpreter Foundation's status with our friends at the Internal Revenue Service, or IRS. We applied to the IRS for 501c3 tax-exempt status in the autumn of 2012. The application form says the process requires roughly 90 days. That was not just filling out the form, that means the whole thing. Um, Several months ago, I checked the IRS webpage and it announced that they were then processing applications from 12 months before. So much for 90 days. This led me to expect that we might get approval by now, but I checked again two days ago and they're currently processing applications from May 2012, which means they have now fallen fully 18 months behind. Needless to say, I'm frustrated, but the Interpretive Foundation is fortunate. For one thing, we didn't include the words Patriot, Constitution, or Tea Party in our application. <laughs> More importantly, thanks to the generosity of many of you here, we can weather this. We have every expectation that eventually when the IRS gets around to reviewing our application, it will be approved. And we're told that once it's approved, tax exemption will apply retroactively to all donations made from the date of our application. Does that leave us and some of you somewhat in limbo? Yes. But there seems no way around it. Do we still need to raise funds? Yes, we do. We have big dreams and we know how to make them happen. happen. Um, I'm personally delighted that Interpreter is able to sponsor this particular conference. In fact, I insisted that I wanted to be on the program, if only for these few minutes. Why? I found myself described at various places on the web repeatedly as a young earth creationist who hates and fears science, regarding it as demonic. Now, that's the nicer things that are said about me. Uh, however, so far as I can recall, I've never been a young earth creationist, ever. And I arrived at BYU as a mathematics major with an interest in astronomy and cosmology. I soon went over to the dark side, pursuing degrees in Greek philosophy and ultimately Near Eastern languages. But my dissertation focused on an 11th century Arab Neoplatonist cosmology, so the interest never altogether faded. And I still take particular delight in roadside geology and in the history of astronomy and cosmology. Thus, I'm thrilled at the very idea of this conference, excited for the day ahead. And in the interest of my own vindication for the public record, I want it known that I believe in and value science. Again, we're delighted at your attendance here. We're excited to present this conference to you. We hope that today's papers strengthen faith, deepen understanding, and stimulate new thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.